feel her going. Where's home for you guys? The Scranton area. Oh, okay. About two and a half hours away. Yeah. Although this morning it was more like three. Mm -hmm. On traffic, right? Mm-hmm. Is that an overhead shot? Are we looking down? This is a, actually a cross section right at the level oh, okay. of the heart of the baby, the chest. Does the baby have a name? She uh, does. Is it a secret? That's fine. It's fine. If it's, it's, fine. If it's a secret, don't worry. Because yeah. you know what? All you get is comments on it. <laughs> it's not necessarily. Uh, Lily and Jane? Oh, it's and beautiful. beautiful. I'm 27 weeks along. We're expecting a little girl. And um, I'm hoping for the healthiest baby we can have. Um, I know we've come to the right place. Um, and I'm just very optimistic of um, what lies ahead. She has a congenital uh, diaphragmatic hernia. And when you look online, it says the worst. When we came here, it was a breath of fresh air that we might be able to take her home one day. We might be able to. <laughs> put her into school and have a, few, have a future for her. There's nothing we can't face. Um, she's gonna be our daughter regardless, and um, we'll treat her like any other daughter we would have had, healthy or with, with some struggles. Congenital diaphragmatic hernia, or CDH for short, is a defect, it's a congenital birth defect, it happens the problem happens around 11 weeks when the diaphragm fails to form completely. The result of that is that the things that are in the abdomen, mainly the intestines, the stomach, the liver, the spleen, they can go up into the chest. And when that happens, um, it affects the lung growth. Um, so it's not so much just the hole in the diaphragm, it's really about the effects on the cardiopulmonary system. I first met Laura and Nick at the time of their initial consultation here at CHOP. They were worried about their unborn daughter. They have a small son at home. It's very overwhelming to hear all the news that your baby's gonna spend time in an intensive care unit and that you're probably gonna be relocated to Philadelphia for some time during that care while you're trying to figure out care for your child at home and worry about your sick daughter in the NICU and figure out as a couple and as a family how you're gonna manage all of this. You just wish you could provide them that clarity that day. And that's really what our goal is, is to give them hope for what things can look like down the road. How are you dealing with the diagnosis and everything? How is that for you guys? As good as we can, mm -hmm. take it day by day. I mean, it is what it is. Nothing that could have been controlled or right. yeah, it's not that we could do now. Right. It's a waiting game. Mm -hmm. Right. I feel like um, the calm before the storm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. A lot of people say the anxiety and stress is really high at the time of diagnosis, and then it sort of comes down during this period where mm -hmm. you're making a plan and sort of chugging along. But yeah, as you get closer to the end, it, it kind of goes mm -hmm. back up. The longer we spend here, the mm -hmm. more confident we get in yeah. mm -hmm. knowing that you know we're in good hands. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Having a baby with a congenital diaphragmatic hernia who's the, that's been diagnosed in utero is very stressful for families. I'm Juliana Jack, one of the other MFMs. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, nice nice to meet you. Um, so I can't control baby? that. <laughs> it's still gonna be, there's no reason to think that your delivery is going to be anything other than normal. Okay. And I think being here is really important because they know that they're going to get the best care possible. I think that maybe we could relocate you as a family. Possibly. I mean, we would, whatever is needed, we would make do. Because this is a condition where it is important to be close by and to right. be able to get here for delivery. Right. So I would think that maybe by 35, 36 weeks, it would be important to be here. Okay. A congenital diaphragmatic hernia is a very difficult diagnosis to receive as a parent. I'm happy with the way everything, the growth is perfect. Everything okay. else looks good. This is the situation where it really does take a village. It takes everybody involved to make this go smoothly and for the baby to survive and do well. Babies with CDH 
clearly do much better when they're born in a hospital where all the expertise is available to take care of them from, from the second that they, that they arrive. And so if we can make a plan throughout the whole pregnancy, for the delivery, for mom, for baby, we can have the best outcome possible for both. What we find with babies who have congenital diaphragmatic hernia, who have some portion of their bowel or their liver, or their stomach up in their chest is that when they're delivered, um, they have difficulty breathing. So that really is one of the biggest challenges when we meet a baby in the delivery room, is just trying to help them breathe. The first big hurdle is delivery and birth and stabilizing her. And then after a few days, depending on how her progress is, the next step will be the surgery. Eight, nine, ten. Oh, she's right there. Look at her. Oh, oh she's so cute. Oh, uh, her name is Lillian Jane Harding. Uh, she was seven pounds, seven ounces, born at 2.31 p.m. 2.21 p.m. 2.21. 2.21 p.m. And yeah, she's doing better than expected. And she is. She looks just like our son. Yeah. I do it with the, we'll have to do a side-by-side -side photo later. Mm-hmm, lots of hair. Mm-hmm. For babies with congenital diaphragmatic hernia, at the time of birth, we have the mom deliver in one room and we have the adjoining room full of a, a team ready to meet the baby and take care of them right from the very beginning. And so we have neonatologists, fellows, nurses, respiratory therapists, the pediatric surgeon. Uh, everybody is available for the delivery. ECMO program uh, at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia is one of the busiest in the country. So we do over 50 to 60 um, ECMO cases a year, which is really important. Experience and volume matter with ECMO. That tear in the diaphragm where the intestines are pushing up into the lungs and pushing the heart over. Then, you know, after she's born, they have to have the surgery to repair the diaphragm and then put everything back where it should go. I think unrepaired, I think it would have been, she wouldn't have lived. She wouldn't survive without the surgery. Lillian, we're going to say a prayer for you and ask God's blessing upon you this morning. I'll begin by reading Psalm 121, which is a prayer of hope. I lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. That's been a roller coaster ride. Right now, she's, uh, the next few hours, she'll be going to your surgery to fix the, the hernia. There's really no words to describe. Just, uh, you just want to be in there and hold her and everything. So that's been tough, but she means the world to us and we just really can't wait to, to be able to, one, hold her, and then bring her home. I want to smile. She's been rock stable. My Exceeding own. expectations. That's good. <laughs> well, especially, we thought it was going to be, you know, any week to 12 days, 11 days for the surgery. You guys said tomorrow. I was like, what? <laughs> I wasn't sure if this was, this is just the typical honeymoon phase. <laughs> All right. Well, I will you so see much. you soon. Okay. So you'll see a lot of preparation that happens. And... Lillian Harding, she's two days old and was diagnosed prenatally with a CDH. Her Tmax was 37.3, heart rate was 122 to 146. Typically, in almost all cases, we'll do the surgery right in the ICU. BP 36 to 54, preductal sets 96 to 100. So we turn that room into uh, an operating room. To fix the hernia, what we need to do is typically go into an incision on the abdomen, and then we're gonna bring all the stuff that's in the chest down, and then we're gonna assess the defect, and then we're gonna fix it. Hi, 
guys, all done. We're good. We're good. So tonight and today, it's really about keeping her comfortable. Okay. Being sure that, you know, the honeymoon continues. Who's drinking the Red Bull? <laughs> I'm exhausted. I think it's important to know that while a congenital diaphragmatic hernia is a big diagnosis, it's also just a diagnosis. There are other factors that play into it and that it's, it's not a, a sentence with an ending. And so it makes you really appreciate the things that you have going right in your life and that are going, you know, the way you expect them. And um, not to take anything for granted. Go ahead and give her kisses. Aww. Give her kissing. Mm -hmm. On your cheek. Oh, sweet brother. You know, we are so privileged to care for these families that come to see us. They sacrifice a lot to be here sometimes, and they are so brave. We are so inspired by them on a daily basis. It's really about figuring out if we can do something to help. I think that's a really important responsibility. It's about, this is what we see, we know we can help the child by doing this. And we want to make sure that your child has the best life possible. That's what it's about.